I've been playing this game for, well, since the uh, early 2000s? Yeah, about 2001. No. It would have been 1999 when I started playing. Uh, so I've been playing for almost 22 years now. And uh, pretty consistently. And so uh, I've made a lot of characters. <laughs> nice. Uh, and originally with like third edition and 3.5 um characters were a lot of stats and stats are important they're they're what make the rules of the game they're kind of what allow you to function in terms of like how am i gonna do this how am i gonna do that but um the other side of it that became more relevant for me as time went on is uh hey trillion um, is that uh, as time went on, I found that people are that you need a story for that character, and so I started talking to people about how to make those characters. Um, did I forget anything, Sam? Uh, no, just uh, well, um, b before you dive right into the slides, just a quick reminder of about a couple uh intro things. Um, mm -hmm. so uh, if you uh, Kirzu here is going to kick things off um, and go through this uh, presentation here at the beginning. Um, our Twitch stream is up, so if anyone's watching over there, um, we're going to be streaming the first section here. And then uh, when it goes more into Q&A and maybe like a little bit more of a workshop style, um, that's that'll be the end of the stream. So if you want to participate in the second half of the event, um, please join our Discord server if you're not already in it. Um, and that way you can ask questions, you can... You can chat, share your character sheet, maybe, you know, whatever. Um, uh, and if you're looking for that, you can go to dndnewbies.com. That's our main website, and it's right there on the home page. Um, and uh, the VOD for the stream will uh, be sent over to YouTube. So if you want to ever go back and look things up um, or watch in a section again or anything like that, it will be over there. Um, if you have questions, comments, the special events text channel is where you can post that in Discord. It's above us, um, above the voice channel that we're in right now. Um, and if you haven't really used Discord before, I think most people in here are probably kind of experienced at this point from who I recognize, but um, there should, if you haven't figured it out yet, the, in the voice channel we're in right now, there's a watch stream button. Um, or, or next to Kirzu's name, there will be a live indicator. Uh, that's how you can see his uh, screen here. Um, and I think that's all the, the, yeah, that's all the kind of housekeeping stuff. So, all right, Kirzu, take it away. All right. So, um, welcome to a guide to creating a living, breathing character. Um, I do, I do accents and voices myself, uh, so that's why I call it Find My Voice. Um, and uh, we'll even go into a little bit of how to do that and how to uh, diversify your characters in that in that uh, methodology as well. Um, but the first question I have to ask is. Well, what makes a character? Um, to the left here, or to the right here, um, if I could remember which one is which, uh, you'll see three of my favorite characters from uh, fantasy genre um, pop culture references. Um, Gollum, Smeagol, uh, Eric Bernison, and Driss Doerden. Uh Admittedly, Drist Arden doesn't really have a voice actor because he's not really represented in any video media. He's largely been written about uh, by the wonderful author R.A. Salvatore. But uh, Eric is, um, was in a book series called His Dark Materials Trilogy. And um, they're, they're both a little more obscure. Eric is probably the most that I, that I have on here. Um, but, uh, that came out as a, uh, HBO series called, uh, His Dark Materials. Um, and, uh, so they all have a few things in common. Uh, everybody has a quirk. Everybody has something about them that makes them who they are. Um, Smeagol, you know, and, and we'll get into details about each of these. Uh, 
but but every character has something that's unusual or unique to them. Every person does. Uh, backgrounds. Uh, every every one of them could tell you a story if if you took the time to listen. And uh, voice, yeah, they they each have their own unique way of speaking. Um, and uh, that's again, that's something that's that's a bit of a lengthier topic. So we'll dig into that and keep on going. Uh, welcome, welcome, guys. Oh, wrong screen. <clears throat> so. Let's take a look. Uh, each character has something unusual about them. Smeagol Gollum, uh, uh, as an example, are not only very capable of speaking to themselves. They almost at times seem to revile each other, while other times they seem to agree based on the addiction to the One Ring. It's the one thing that they can agree on, is that the ring is important to them. Um... So you can see they, they kind of have this quirk of insanity and, and this, this duality of personas uh, built right into them. And it, it gives them a unique flavor. When, when you talk about Gollum and you talk about his personality, you, you kind of notice those strange twitches and, and the way he, pardon me, uh, behaves. Uh, the next would be uh, Eric. Eric is known as a Panzerbjorn, or an armored bear. Uh, he is attached to his armor, calling it a part of his soul. Uh, it's it's part it's part of his people that inform that. But uh, his his unique thing is that he is, um, in in that setting, he is one of the very few uh, armored bears that are that is known to really interact with humans very often. Um, but uh, they, they are very attached to that armor that they, that they have. Um, they consider it as close to them as, you know, humans to their souls. And then everybody's favorite drow elf. Uh, Drist is a drow that doesn't feel the seething hatred of most drow. Uh, he is a compassionate individual, which conflicts greatly with his skill at fighting. Um, he is a renowned dual-wielding ranger. Um, and uh, he doesn't really like to kill people, but he'll do it when he has to. Um, and uh, yeah, he doesn't like the backstabby, betraying ways of the drow. And so it sets him very, very outside of the norm because on the surface world, as a drow, because, you know, most drows are, you know, not very nice people, he is um, hated because he's a drow. Um, underneath the ground, he's reviled because he doesn't want to do the things that drow do. So on both sides of it, he's he's an outcast. Scrolling down the wrong page. Um, each of them has a story that they could tell you. Uh, Smeagol wasn't always this way. He became this when his friend found the One Ring and so desired it that Smeagol killed his friend and fled to the mountain. Um... You know, this is a very simplified, watered-down version of, of what happened and how that transpired and how that addiction became more overwhelming over time. And, you know, it's, it's I believe, 160, 140 years, something like that, in, in the storyline of him having this ring and it just being with him constantly whispering in his head. Um... And yeah, so he, he could tell you a lot of things about living under the mountain and avoiding goblins and, you know, all that wild stuff. <clears throat> uh, so he has a, one heck of a story to tell. Uh, if you can, you know, understand it between uh, from the way he tells it. Um, next would be Eric. Um, he would tell you the story for a drink, of how he was tricked into giving up his armor, that uh, he was in exile for doing a terrible thing. There's a whole lot 
of backstory wrapped up there. Um, when he's first found in the books, uh, he's working as a smith in a small port city. And uh, when he's questioned, um, he tells them that he was tricked with drink, with spirits, alcohol, uh, and that his armor was stolen away in the night. And that in order for uh, him to get his armor back, he would have to do work for them. How much? He, there, it's not really known. Um, but you can see how that's going to change the way he looks at humans in general uh, to in a negative light. And uh, how he kind of looks down on himself because he knows that he's here because he did a bad thing elsewhere. Um, Drist Dorden could tell you tales of his home. Have his home? Huh. Oops. Uh, the wretched Menzoberranzen. Um, it's a great drow city in the Underdark. Uh, and he could tell tales of almost losing oneself to the very dark of the deep itself. So the drow live in a place called the Underdark. And, uh, so you've got to look at a perspective of having never seen the sun before. I mean, just think about that. You you live forever underground in nigh perpetual darkness. Um, you know, there's there's unspeakable monstrosities down there that want to kill you. Now there are a lot of ways to get around that. Um, there that you know there there are ways to live in that and there are ways to create light down there um but typically uh the draw had to be very used to being in the dark constantly um and then for a voice uh Smeagol has been driven mad and so mutters to his dark half but the other parts of his speech come from who, is, who he was. From every Trixel Hobosus to, ev to every Bones Us. Uh, that's, that's a large portion from how he spoke before the ring got a hold of him. Now, the ring made him talk more to himself. So, you know, when he's talking about somebody, he's not even considering that they're sitting right there. He's talking to his other half, saying, Oh, those chicks and hobbits are always getting on the wall. And, uh, you know, causing, and it, it, it's, it's a dialogue. Um, his voice is definitely, his speech pattern is definitely something that sets him apart. Um, the, between the extra plural, pluralities to the, um, the constant reference of us instead of me, um it it all kind of shapes the way he he speaks and the way he tones things and how he sees things so what's going to make him excited what's going to make him scared are very different than what a normal person person would be afraid of or be excited by um Eric is a big bear he's a he's a you know, he's an armored polar bear. So he's massive. And so, you know, his frustration with humans saying, they tricked me and stole my armor whilst I slept. Versus, you know, when he, you know, while he's angry and, and trying to be intimidating, speaking loudly and boisterously. Versus when he was speaking to Lyra. Um, and uh he that that's the actual nickname he gave her in the book and he but he does it i name you lyra silvertop in a much more calm soothing voice so a a deep voice if your vocal cords can can handle hitting those notes um can be um used in a lot of ways uh, it can be sonorous and calming, or it can be uh, boisterous and intimidating. You know, so there's there's 
a plurality to it. Um, and that's something that you should consider when you're trying to find a voice for a character is, you know, is my character going to be try, try to scare people? Or are they going to try to persuade people? Are they going to try to trick people? Um, and that can that can help with a lot of fun stuff. I actually have another website for the accents and languages. Um, and then Driss Jordan doesn't have a whole lot of uh, actually spoken dialogue. Um, as again, he's largely been portrayed in books. Um, I don't know if he has much media. But the way I've always heard his voice is more of a thank you, Brunor, uh, to I shouldn't be here in a kind of soft elven voice. He's he's reserved and and fairly quiet, but he's he speaks properly because he was raised in a noble home house down in, in Menzo Baranzin. So he's well educated and he's smart. But he doesn't have the outgoing personality of Eric or the um, eccentricities of of Smeagol. He's more of a quiet, calm individual that wants nothing more than a little bit of peace and quiet, though for some reason up here in the Icewind Dale, everything seems to explode now and again. Um, so, uh, that's kind of the, the larger portion of this, um, as far as, like, the depth and breadth of, you know, po how popular media affects things, um, versus, um, these, these three are three of my characters, um, characters that I've played um over time um the top one is my dragonborn dovrin the second one is garrick shadefell um he's my goliath rogue which does seem to be pretty silly and then i have uh yuk took the pale who is a uh kobold paladin of bahamut and uh so typically with with Dovrin, I'm speaking in a loud, boisterous voice, but it's friendly, open, free. Hello, my friends. How are you today? When I'm speaking as Garrick, who's less intelligent, um, and uh, more of a, a wilderness person, uh, he kind of looks at all the small people that come into the area as puppies. Uh, he can't help it. They're so much smaller than he is. He, he treats them like, like they're kids, basically. And so he goes, Hold up, little one. Don't move forward just yet. Hang on. Let's take a look before we go. Um, he has the... that That's his kind of unique quirk. Um, and uh, it, it makes him uh very cautious about his other party members. He's very protective of them. He doesn't want them hurt. Um and that's his his unique habit. Yuktuk Yuktuk's quirk is he believes that one day he will become a dragonborn or a dragon. He thinks if he follows Bahamut hard enough and trains hard enough and becomes strong enough in the god's name that the god will bless him and turn him into one of the other two. Uh, for now, he's three and a half feet tall and wears, you know, heavy armor. So there's that. Um, but he, he talks mostly in a small voice. And, you know, for Bahamut! And he charges into battle. <clears throat> he's rather obsessed with that. Um, the second one is... is the backstory, so something to consider for you guys is uh, who's who's important to your character. Dovrin's got a clan, a clutch of of hatchmates that he's been searching for. That's a part of his background. Um, Garrick is 
uh, his, his is not so much it's someone important to you. His is more about wanting to achieve safety for the Goliath clans. Um, and then Yuktuk uh, is 100% behind a bomb, a Bahamut, and that's who's important to him. But any follower of Bahamut and any dragonborn in his vicinity are automatically important to him because, you know, they're they're the form of the god and he's trying to emulate that. Um so those are the kind of things that fall into these characters' backstories that uh you know you want to these are the things that I recommend including um in a backstory because again at there at the bottom they can be used as ways for your your game master to tie your background into the narrative so that you get to um learn and experience with uh individuals and learn how to um make a character that that gets wrapped up in the story so that others can help with your story as you go and help with theirs And then the voice. Um, it's not just a voice. The way I look at voices, um, the voice stats are intelligence, charisma, and con. Um, and the reason I say that is uh, charisma is how outspoken your character is going to be, um, or or you know how well, they, how eloquently they put things. Um, intelligence is you know how verbose they can be and you know the size of the vocabulary that a character would have a high intelligence low charisma character could be um look at this beautiful pattern this array of of this magical field is fascinating and everybody else is just looking at you like you're an insane person because they can't see the matrix that you can because you're you know, you're using detect magic to read the pattern of the spell, or you're using identify on that magic item, and your character's really excited, and so they're, you know, spitting out all these high-level arcana terms, and nobody else in the party gets it. So they just kind of look at you like, okay, now again in English. Um, whereas a high charisma, low intelligence character is still going to be, you know, hello, how are you today? Oh, that's great. My, my, aren't you looking stunning today? Uh, they're not going to say things, they're not going to use bigger words like, um, uh, that's very perceptive of you, um, which is going to be a more intelligence charisma balance. Um, they're going to say, you know, use adjectives like great, splendid. Whereas a higher intelligence is going to be more like wonderful, amazing, incredible. Um, and then constitution is a fun one because if you're a young, youthful kid, you've got all this energy and you're going you're gonna to put that in your voice. But if you're a sickly kid, you're not going to have as much energy for talking and you 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 might get distracted or lose your train of thought and not not be able to to what why um so there's there's constitution plays into it and if you're an old man you know stuff like that your voice is going to be more of a soft wheeze and you're going to have a harder time putting your voice out and making it project as easily so it's it's kind of a balance of of those three stats as far as as um a voice. Uh the next thing to consider is, you know, where is that voice coming from? Are you coming from a beautiful island in the middle of the ocean? Are you coming from somewhere warm and dry? Um or are you coming from somewhere cold and dark? You know, it's there there are many accents in this world. And uh, you should 100% feel free to employ any of them that you are comfortable um, to, you know, feel comfortable using. Um, 
if you're if you feel uncomfortable using an accent, then don't don't make your character from there. Find find a different region, uh, and find a different accent that is going to suit your character a little bit better. Yeah. Um. So switching your accent up can can automatically help other players recognize when you're playing a particular kind of character. Um, so, you know, it, when I play a dwarf, I, I, I unfortunately fall into the dwarfs or Scots trope. So all my dwarves are, you know, Scottish and brug and, and ready to just absolutely tromp and stomp and ready to roll. Um, so that's that's kind of how my dwarves are. Doesn't mean that's how your dwarves have to be, 100%. But uh, that's just how I've usually done them. Um, so is there is there something from your past that might affect your speech? Um, does your character have a hanging look and it makes it hard to speak? Or do you have a stutter? Or, you know, there there are many uh, applications of how you might apply something from your background that may have affected the way you speak and talk. Um, what excites your character? What makes them sad? Uh, as I said with that high intelligence, low charisma wizard, they're super stoked about magic. So they're going to raise their voice and talk more quickly whenever they see the thing that they're most interested in. Um, whereas if they see something that makes them sad, they're going to be more considerate with their words and slow to answer things because they don't, they don't remember. or their, their brain's a bit foggy at the moment because they're thinking about this, not what you're asking them. Um... The next, the probably the most important thing to tell you about doing characters, um, is never ever use a voice that hurts. If if you're if you're using a voice, and you feel that that strain in the back of your throat. Stop. Change the accent, change the voice. I don't care if it was perfect for the character. Change the accent, change the voice. Do not ruin your vocal cords for the sake of a D&D &D character. Find something that's more comfortable for you to say, for you to speak. Uh, find a more comfortable way for you to play that character. Um, it's, it's just, it's really bad for your vocal cords to strain them that hard. You can with practice, expand how high or how low your voice can go. Just be careful and make sure that you're taking it in steps if you're trying to move in that direction. I just don't want to see anybody d and ding so hard that they hurt themselves. <laughs> um, these are all very important things to consider about the way your character talks and uh, the accents that they use and you know, do do take yourself into consideration for that because that character is a part of you, regardless of how uh, of how different from you you make them. They're still your id. Your they're a part of your persona, if that makes any sense. A pullout not makes a decent point there. Make sure people are okay with you using their voices, uh, with voices. But I mean, I've always viewed that as part of the fun. Um. Okay, so it's going to be your turn. Um. I'm gonna go ahead and. There's got to be a better way to do this. Um, what, are you, uh, what are you trying to do? Will it 
permanently unmute them for this channel, or if when they leave and rejoin, it'll remute them. Uh, they, if you un, if you unmute someone manually, uh, they they're able to just remute themselves. Otherwise, you uh, you can re recheck the mute. Um, you just have to make sure to undo it later. Okay. Well, well, no, no, no. I what I'm saying is like if. For future special events, when they leave and come back, will they be remuted? Oh, uh, I believe so. Yep. I think so. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and start with you, Arvin. Uh, what are you asking him to do? <laughs> uh, well, well, I was about to get to that. Um, oh, sorry. So it's your turn. Um, the The... We, we did request that you would bring a character with you um, to kind of speak to... Um, did I unmute you? Yes, I did. Uh, that you bring a character with you, or an idea for a character, and uh, that we could help you kind of work on who that character is. Um, the stream should probably... And now, because this is going to move more into the workshop session. Gotcha. Thank you okay. guys for watching. <laughs> Bef uh, really quick, Kirzu, uh, uh, just to give everyone a chance, because there might be some general questions that want to be asked, not specifically related to the workshop element. Um, are you okay, okay possibly giving them at least oh, a few minutes to, to potentially ask questions? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Ask away, my friends. Cool. All right. Well, so if for everyone that's listening here in uh, Discord, if you have just like yeah general questions not related to the more workshop element but just anything that was covered in the presentation please uh post your question in the special events text channel um and if anyone's on tw uh, that's watching on twitch wants to ask a question um you can also post in the twitch chat and i'll relay your question over to Kirisu oh here. I'm, i've got your twitch chat up oh okay perfect so we'll, we'll see that uh if you post in in twitch as well um, so yeah, let's just wait like a, a minute or two here. See if see if any questions come through. Um, I to kick kick it off though, Kirza. I had a question for you um, as a, a kind of a general question. I was listening in here. Um, how how important do you think doing voices is? Like, is it is it like more of an just kind of an added flourish that's fun and, and can add like, you know, just, just a, a nice touch to the game? Or do you find that doing voices really connects you to the character you're playing like even more or a, a, anything like that? So learning a, or to, to answer Sam's question, um, I, I think, I think character accents, can be a wonderful part of the game it's mostly for flourish you mostly do it for the art of it and for the sake of of get breathing that that much more life into your character uh an accent makes a character a little more instantly recognizable uh versus a um it, it's uh it's one of those it's one of those things i think i think helps quite a bit but is it necessary no by by no means is it necessary uh as long as you're having fun at the table have fun but i i've always found delight in in giving that that bit of life to my characters um so i always i've always done my best to to do that myself a stronger mental connection yeah yeah no absolutely um, actually, funny you should mention the, uh, the, I actually have a wonderful website for finding, um, for starting to learn accents. Um, there are, there are a couple of tutorials online, uh, I think it's English Archive, right? Uh, there we go. Uh, it's the International uh, Eng Dialects of English Archive, uh, or IDEA. Uh, you can get to it by going to dialects.archive.com. Uh, and there, it's all copyrighted, so don't like try to sell people these collections of, of people speaking. But uh, you can listen to these these people talking in their 
uh, in English. And, uh, oh, wonderful. And it's, uh, it is a beautiful way. You listen to what they're saying. Um, and then you try to repeat it. Repeat it back to yourself out loud. Um, so if you're going for the German accents, uh, you, you listen to somebody who uses it quite often. And uh, they, this will inform you how to speak that way and, and how to use that. Um, and I don't quite have the German accent nailed myself yet. I actually uh, game with a couple of Germans fairly regularly, uh, a couple of, of native Germans. And uh, so uh, that's that's very true. They have some sentences that, that do. Oh, that's also a fun one. Um, so Milkbox, that's, that's how I would answer that question is, is use, uh, I, I picked all of mine up from watching different movies and things. Um, I have an ear for, for an accent. Um, that's how I can speak with a British accent if I really need to, or I can switch to be an Irish if I really, really want to. Um, Actually, I incidentally got most of my Irish accent from learning, uh, from listening to the uh, Boondock Saints, which is a very, very mature film, and I only recommend it if you're 18 or older. Um, but uh, listening to those two talk to each other uh, was a great way to uh, to learn it. Um, What are considerations or red flags regarding character voice concept to avoid creating a character that fundamentally caters to single player games narratives, thus making it harder to play the character within the bounds of a social contract with a party of other players? Um, I don't recommend doing any accent that is so thick that it is impossible to understand. And uh, I typically would recommend avoiding... Uh, using much of the local slang uh even if you are from that place so like there's a general consensus of of what of what english is but uh like um I, i've got a few australian friends uh there's a whole stretch of slang lingo that they use in australia where they'll s talk a sentence at you and they will have absolutely, you will have no idea what they just said. Because they were talking talking about witch hats and bonnies. And you're like, was that even a, a coherent sentence? And then I had the Australian go back and explain to me exactly what it was. And he was talking about getting stuck in construction traffic. Um, I mean, so typically when, when an NPC, uh, is going to be important, uh, enough that your party is going to be like, oh, well, I'm going to write down this name because that person's going to be important forever. Um, uh, you, you know, it's, it is, uh, typically a. Uh, good idea to just kind of give yourself some kind of uh, mnemonic trigger uh, to uh, an accent and then a one word description of their personality. Friendly, uh, hurried, uh, angry, grumpy, you know, just, just to kind of give you a basic jumping off point for where their, their personality starts when the char when a char player character starts to interact with them um and then um you know saying uh aussie irish whatever will remind you of the accent that you typically used for them um beyond that the name is usually enough of a trigger for me to to remember
catchphrase. Um, that's that's very true. Catchphrases are catchphrases are are great. Um, the the one for Garrick as an example is a uh, little one, and I'm usually able to jump right into that deep kind of dumb big guy voice where he no little one back off. Um, and then for Dovrin, it's the laugh. His big ha ha ha. Um, I've never had an issue when, uh, I've never had an issue with, uh, players that don't voice. Um, I'm a hundred percent behind people not, not using a voice if they don't. Um, some people are really new to the game and, uh, so they don't feel comfortable with that level of role play yet. And that's perfectly okay. You know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to use my accents to encourage that and to, to say, you know, this is, this is how I do it. If, if you want to try this, you're more than welcome to. It's, it's kind of like leaving a door open and saying, feel free. What idiots am I helping today? Oh, let, let me try that again. Hold on. Oh, what idiots am I helping today? Uh, except for much little advice, because he's a little gnome. Does that mean he's a leprechaun? <laughs> um. So that's that's kind of. Uh, that's kind of been my experience. Uh, is that some people don't. Uh, because they're not comfortable doing it yet. Um, and there are some people that just feel that they can't. <laughs> I can't confirm nor deny his focus being a pot of gold. Um, well, I mean, you know, each character their own. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's, there's never been an issue between uh having people that do it and having people that don't um i i'm perfectly happy for people to play either way um i mean i encourage people to because i feel that it it builds that as as duck said um i feel that it builds that that connection to the character it makes you that much closer to who they are when you have an idea of how they sound in your head All right, let's give Milkbox here a second to type out. Oh, there we go. Uh, like to see an accent? Um, could you could you explain that a little bit more, Milkbox? I'm I'm a little confused by the question. Would like to do an accent, but their party is overwhelming them with theirs. Um. Take some time with, uh, on your own with uh, some media that contains that accent. Uh, the idea website is is a wonderful way to do it. Um, the English archive, um, or or a movie that has that accent in it, um, and listen to it. And as they're speaking, try and say what they're saying. Try and repeat it with their inflection. See, listen to how their eyes and R's and A's sound um because those are those are often really hard points in a language and they're often what affect the way it sounds um like uh in an in an irish accent i i don't know if i'm going to explain this quite correctly but in an irish accent you're you're gonna hear a lot of the vowels become shorter and you're gonna hear the sh become much sharper 
Um, and uh, your eyes tend to be held just a little bit, not quite to the point of rolling, like a uh, like a Scotsman would. Um, Jenny D is also a, also a good one. Um, but uh, you're gonna hear how your your ours are held out just that little bit longer. Um, but your your vowels tend to be short and sharp. Um, versus an English accent, which is going to be much more level. Um, your your ours are going to be a lot softer. And your uh, A's are going to be longer, more pronounced. Uh, same with most of your vowels. Um, so you can see just between these two dialects that you're you're going to uh, expand certain parts of words and shorten others. Um, like I said, the R's in in the the you, you know uh, your uh, British accent do tend to be quite a bit softer. So instead of softer, you would say softer. Does that make sense? Um, but uh, there, there are a couple of really good. Uh, you could probably YouTube it even, where they give you an idea of like how different parts of a of a language uh, affect uh, is affected by somebody's accent. Probably should look up one for German because that's that's an accent I've been wanting to perfect. There are, um, yeah, that's that. Typically, at your role-playing table, that's not something you're going to have to worry about too much, ducks. Um, if you role-play with somebody from the UK, um, they might call you out on it. Uh, there are uh, forty, I want to say forty-something dialects out in um, the UK in the British Islands alone. Not even in the UK, just just the British Islands alone. There are there are forty forty something slightly different accents. So something to consider. Um, I do have a few connecting notes between a few of the different ones. Um, I'm not perfect, but I have been confused for an Englishman. So, you know, I've got that going for me. <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions? Yeah, we can uh, maybe give one more second here. If anyone has any last questions before we move into the workshop, workshop section. Um, for anyone on Twitch, just another reminder, if you want to uh, continue to participate and uh, you have a character ready to go, um, you can join our Discord server and we're hanging out in the special events channel. Just connect to the channel. Um, and you'll be able to continue asking questions. And and if anyone does have, you know, I think questions over the next however long, I mean, I'm sure they can, you can still ask them. So, um, but I believe, um, why don't we uh, end the stream there and then uh, we can, yeah, Kirzi, uh, we can move into the, the workshop section. Sound good? Oh, um, yeah, absolutely. Um... Cool. All right, well, um, so yeah, uh, I'm going to end the stream there. Uh, if anyone on the Twitch side, thanks for watching. Um, again, jump into the Discord if you want to. Otherwise, for everyone else that's here, um, if, you, if there's something that you want to check back on or anything like that, a uh, copy of this will be on Twitch for a little bit before it expires, and then the, the VOD will be sent over to YouTube so you can watch it at any time in the future. Um, otherwise, uh, thank you, Kirzu, for a great presentation. That was really interesting. You have a ton of voices. It's really impressive. Um, oh, thank you. Um, cool. that's, that's quite the compliment, and, and I do take it to heart. <laughs> cool. um, okay, well, take the stream down and, and feel free to, to take it away with the workshop.